he he just a dog lover, but, you know, plain and simple, above and beyond everything else. But I would encourage people to read into my dog anything that they choose to read into it. Okay. And real quick, tell us where they can find you online. You can find Blind Lemon Peel at uh, blindlemonpeel.com. You can find Blind Lemon Peel on Facebook at the at Blind Lemon Peel. And you can find Blind Lemon Peel on Instagram at the uh, the same thing, Blind Lemon Peel is that Fantastic. name on Instagram and on Facebook. So we have a presence. Uh, please get on there. Sign up for our mailing list. We'll be happy to keep you apprised of events as they come up and the adventures of Blind Lemon Peel and their dogs and everything else. Great. Thank you again so much for filling in for Dave. We appreciate you being here. We wish Dave the best with his situation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is My Dog by Blind Lemon Peel.
There you have it. My dog. That's the Blind Lemon Peel Band right here on the David Bowers Awards, where next up are the Reverend Cavaliers going to talk with them right after we listen to their tune, Girl with a Gun. Cavaliers, and here to talk to us about the Reverend Cavaliers is Rick Hammond. Hello, Rick. How are you doing today? Doing quite well, sir. Yourself? Oh, we're hanging in there. Thank you very much. Great to have you on board. And uh, I love the sound. Now, the first band we had on was uh, Heavy on the Blues. You kind of bring the uh, you kind of bring the rock edge to uh, some blues sounds. That's a very good ear you got there, yeah, and I agree. I, I enjoyed that interview as well. Those folks kind of share a little bit of history with us because we were out in that same area in California at one point. Were you? And you're, you're out of Nashville now, right? Correct. So we, we've been right. here about 15-plus years, but, yeah, we, I know the areas you were talking about. So, 
I lived out there myself in Southern California, so I'm I'm familiar with those areas. Never got up to the northern part, but that's that's another story for another day. Tell us about the Reverend Cavaliers. Well, basically, um, piggybacking off of what we were just saying, we moved here. Uh, it's been about 15 plus years ago now. My brother and I had a hard rock band we started in South Carolina, moved to Los Angeles, and then decided. Uh, Actually, after returning to our faith, we decided, well, we need to get back down south where we got family, and Nashville's going to be a little bit more embracing of our style. Um, well, my brother decided to hang it up after about 20-plus years. I guess this has been, I guess, six or seven years ago, and my wife, who has been singing with me at church, said, well, I'll sing with you. So she jumped in the band. We got our nephew on drums, and we hired a bass player, and we march on. So there you go. That's kind of the long short of it. That's that's a great story there too. What a what a full circle really, in, in moving around and everything, and and then winding right back up on the uh, on the on the home side more or less, and uh, and, and filling out with, from within with your wife joining the band as a singer too. That's uh, that's quite a story, don't you think, John Bon Jovi? Oh, it is. I you know I I like it quite a bit, and uh, the one thing that kind of piqued my interest, Rick, uh, is that you say that uh, you, you you got back to your faith and, uh, and and have applied that, at least the inference being that you've applied that to your music. And so explain that to us a little bit. How, you know, how has that affected you well, as a musician? Well, I appreciate you asking that. Um, really, what I kind of envisioned doing was was basically not going as an overt, uh, full-on Christian band, but being basically just letting uh, our faith kind of pepper and, and aim our lyrics a little bit. I mean, we still have fun. We're actually going to be playing a, co- a show here in a few weeks. We've got to do about three hours, and a good bulk of it's going to be covers from back in the day. So, Whoa. I mean, it's <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's, it's going to be it's a, it's a hoot. It's a hoot we play down here in uh, just south of Nashville. And, uh, but yeah, so the, the idea is basically, you know, just, you know, if you want to boil it down to positive messages, that's, that's one way to look at it. But, you know, when you, when you think of like U2 and people like that, I mean, technically they've got that peppered in their lyrics as well. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, th- I think that rock and roll has always had a, a pretty positive message. I mean, yeah, it's gotten you know, over the years, uh, certain bands were, you know, loaned, you know, uh, loaned a um, a value, if you will, of you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Uh, but right. but even so, still, rock and roll has continued to, at, at least in my opinion, has always had a positive message. Uh, essentially, you know, look what the Beatles did: peace and love. Look what uh, the Young Bloods did. You know, come on, True. everybody, let's get together. So it's always had by and large a very positive message to it and 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 really not as much of the dark side as people might think 